All right, guys, welcome back to Beautiful Mind. Today we have a really big update, and uh, just going to spend a few minutes, and uh, we're going to talk about all that. So let's first talk about our planetary update. We were discussing how we had two determinations coming up, so let's just take a look at what they... Let's just take a look at what they were. Make that a little bigger for you guys anyways. Okay, so we were talking that uh, we have this January 23rd when Venus would be 270 degrees. And we also have the Sun on a January 30th. It was making a 225. So let's just go ahead and have a look at the chart and uh, let's just see what that's saying to us right now. So let me make that a little small one. And all right, so we were saying we were looking for a, a January 19th, something going on there. So, uh, or sorry, not 19th, 23rd. <laughs> sorry. Here we are. So this level here was attained and this level here hasn't been broken yet it hasn't had a red bottom like a wick <clears throat> excuse me but it is the bottom of our channel and you also note that uh, the 30th is our next determination here where the Sun would have been 225 and we have a bottom here and please note that uh, this level here is exactly the same level as this 23rd here so uh, let's just kind of keep in mind that that's uh that's a strong level and we're going to talk about that on the square dime in a minute but before we get away from this what was this bottom here well you'll note that in december 19th the sun was 180 degrees so 30 degrees from december 19th would be january 19th and then the sun would be at 210 degrees and had moved 30 degrees instead of the 45 degrees or the octaves of the circle. So that is um, another reason the sun every 30 degrees makes a bottom. But on this one, we're using the 45 degrees and going around. So I'll just be mindful of that. So, and that occurred, of course, are 45 degrees right here. So we have these two determinations here that have uh, made a higher bottom. And I was expecting, you know, we were going to have a, a breakout and a rollover here. And it's possible that we could have a new cycle started. And we're going to talk about some models that would show that. Now, this is a model that would probably go into about the April, May, June and July period where we'll see a top and then uh, pull back into uh, late in the year, probably somewhere around October, maybe November. Again, we'll revisit some bottoms and then from there, Bitcoin will take off again. So let's go take a look at some models that uh, could determine that as well. And let's go talk about our square of nine first. All right, so, and then our next determination is coming up February 28th here. So, you know, that would be, you know, around here. So are we going to see a pullback to this 20,000? Well, let's go take a look and see if uh, the square of nine is going to confirm that. So as you know, I've now updated this bottom here at 15,000 here with a hot pink. And we have subsequently spun all the way around. We just barely eked up to the 24,000 here. And the bottom of our channel is 22 right here. So the center of this channel is 23. So we have, in fact, made a great relationship here. Now, are we going to get a yellow here? And then uh, maybe, uh, Maybe we might get a hot pink here, uh, bottom sitting down at this 19, 20,000 level here, in which case I think it's possible we spin all the way around and we come all the way up and our first next target is 28 
before we spin all the way around to these levels here and end up making a top around this 46, 47 level here. So it's quite likely that by May, June, and July, we could be around this 46, 47,000 level. Doesn't necessarily have to happen that way, but the trend has changed temporarily. And I've also done a 2023 forecast for stocks and Bitcoin, and uh, it goes back 130 years. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. So I'm expecting that uh, if this level, this 22, 23, if we can hold this, then uh, our next move up is 28, you know, right here. And uh, then up to 34, you know, so is that going to happen? Well, let's go maybe take a look and see if uh, we could attain those levels based on the past models. But before we do that, you can see that we have these levels here that I'm talking about, this 32 to 34 level here, right? And this is this wick down to 34 here. This is a, that's a big bottom. We, we have a chance of, of uh, coming up and uh, spinning all the way and hitting these levels and uh, maybe making a top here, like I say, in that 46, 47 in uh, July. I know I'm a bad news bears for July and uh, I'm expecting we make top in July and have a, have a break and uh, it's uh, the bottom for the channel of the top and we spin back down. How far will we go? Maybe, I don't know, maybe to eight, but I doubt it. We'll see. We're going to see what the levels are going to do and show us. So let's go take a look at some past models now and uh, we're going to go do and do that on the uh, weekly chart. So let's just go ahead and uh, make this a little smaller and move that. And uh, let's just go take a look at what we can determine from our previous cycle. As you guys know, I compare all these things and uh, we're, we're just going to do that right now. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and compare that. And uh, I think you're going to be excited about the findings that we, in fact, make here. So let's go over here and let's just do a comparison. This is exactly what Mr. Gann is doing. Let's take this bear market back in December 2017, and we're going to bring it right out to here. And uh, we're going to just see, you know, try not to lose our minds. And we're just going to make a, a determination based on what happens in the past and if it has any symmetry or if the relationships are close and if we can see that they line up. So, so we just lined up our bottom, our, sorry, our top with our other top. So this is this top. And uh, now we're going to make some determinations regarding this. So let's not lose our minds. I know I've put on some angles here and uh, some determinations like this one here so let's just be mindful so let's go take a look at what we're uh, what we're in fact talking about here just gonna let the storm gain settle down a little bit so we had our top and in these models we're looking for relationships and uh, sometimes the amplitude may not be the same but sometimes it's uh, a reverse correlation so let's go ahead and take a look so we made our, our market top. We've had our swing down here to our current cycle. And we had a bit of a swing down here, but it was a little bit sooner. However, it stopped. We had a bit of a move up and then we moved back down violently. Now, this cycle moved down much more quickly and uh, bottomed out. Whereas this current cycle seemed to meander down a little bit slower. And the amplitude was not as heavy. However, we're looking for relationships. So the moves here moved up in this, you know, previous cycle. And we have these little spike tops here. Again, we moved down and we're starting to line up with our cycle again and re-repeat now. Again, 
we're just looking for relationships and again tops out and then we have a significant fall off here in our current cycle which we do have in the previous cycle and then a sideways movement and then another abrupt move down in our current cycle the previous cycle made a bottom here and a secondary bottom went up and we had a, a third bottom here which is reminiscent of our current cycle and from there we had these small little rallies before it ended up rolling over and the amplitude was almost the same through this area here we had our last little top here in our current cycle as you can just barely see i'm going to make that a little bigger so we can see that uh, kind of helps so we can see it a bit better so we had our green top here with and it coincides quite nicely with our previous cycle here and then we had this sideways movement here and uh, a downward move now the amplitude here changed and we had a really big move and of course it did cycle out with this but our current cycle just right it resisted we had this fake out right and here sort of was a bit of a fake out right here and then it moved down so we're paying attention to this you know just looking for relationships and models so from there it got weak and went sideways and then we had another little move up where our we had a two-day or two-week reaction and uh, in here we had a one-week reaction then we moved back down to our bottoms again right on time and then of course we've had our moves up where we in our current cycle we've sort of broke out of this top here and we're starting to show a little bit of strength However, if we can't get above this top here at this 25, that's going to be show a lot of weakness and uh, that would be a lot of downside. So here we are. We've moved up. We've had a good violent move up here and it's looking like it's about to subside and go sideways before another bottom. And I'm calling for February 28th, a bottom and a fast move up, as you can see from my... Uh, from this, I talk about this February 28th bottom while well, uh, Venus will be at its 315 degree area right uh, right there. So uh, we're going to watch for that. So we're not really expecting that uh, we're going to have this super kick down bottom. But I am expecting that if this level holds like this, you know we're gonna we're gonna have this great big move up and as i was talking to you in previous tutorials i was saying that you know this april may we could have these tops and into july and then i said that uh, well in july if we don't hold this area <laughs> which i feel we're not going to i feel we're going to have a move down to this october and november period and uh, you know the cycles are rhyming so we're just looking for relationships we're looking for symmetry and uh, and that's exactly what we're finding and uh, if you uh, if you go back over what we're talking about here and do your own little homework you can see that uh, these are all lining up these tops and bottoms here you know <laughs> and uh, this is no uh, this is no coincidence you know that we <laughs> these things happen this is the natural reoccurring phenomenon that mr gan was in fact researching and uh, he was in fact utilizing all of these materials and uh, and i feel that he's done a amazing and excellent job and i just want to bring to light that uh, following the market isn't as difficult if we use rules and proper determinations and we study the past all right so moving forward from that the next february i have uh, i'm calling for a bottom as well into the next year and uh, this is going to occur just kind of previous to our you know our bitcoin having event and uh, are we going to have the same amplitude of moves and whatnot not necessarily so uh, but if we line this up, uh, it gets kind of eerie. And I thought maybe we would do that because, um, as you know, I 
like to compare all these things, and uh, I'm always looking for a simulated model where we could uh, make a very good determination. So I'm going to bring this up to the exact top here, and then we're just going to look at it and see whether or not, you know, okay, so the amplitude isn't quite the same. However, uh, I've put a line from this previous top through our current tops from from this this top here, which is the one we're discussing right now in detail. So you can see we're using this model and this top, and I've got this trend line that gently comes through here. So let's go take a look at... Um, what we could see if if this determination can bring us something that we could uh, we could use in the future. So come through here, and uh, looks like this previous model comes up and touches this. And this would be a good point, you know, this 180 to 200 thousand level or a quarter million Bitcoin. That's probably in the cards and. Uh, but we still need to confirm if 15,000 is our bottom. If not, uh, then we might have to revisit some some areas, right? This might have to come back down lower and maybe break all this stuff. And we'll see. So this is one of our previous models we wanted to extrapolate. And uh, as you can see, the, they are eerily similar in... Uh, in strength and as well as the time periods in which moves happen and uh, we're just going to pay attention you know we're going to have this little sideways before this february you know this the 20th anywhere from the 19th to this 28th you know we're going to have this bottom and uh, a really fast move up you know similar very similar in structure okay so Pay attention to this, you know. Okay, so we've done our past model update here. Um, I get a lot of questions asking me about the best books, and uh, I want to talk to you for a minute about uh, Mr. Gann's books and uh, what I I get a lot of questions about this. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at his books. Best books, in my opinion, the two best books is 45 Years in Wall Street by Mr. Gann. This is probably one of the best books as well written. Uh, he, he lays out, I'm going to show you, in, uh, and he catalogs all the dates for like highs and lows and stuff like that. So when we do this, you know, I'm... I look at all his forecasts of all these dates. I'm going to show you a few more where he, uh, you know, he's talking about these swings and, uh, you know, comparing years and, uh, you know, this is what I'm doing. And uh, Mr. Gann cataloged a lot of this material and uh, it's probably one of the best books, I think, you know, especially when you look at... Um, some of the things that he does here where he uh, he tells you all the highs and lows the months of all of all the stuff right here right he tells you all the highs and lows he categorizes all of them he tells you about all all these highs and lows and swings that happen and all his rules for trading I mean this this guy <laughs> is a really incredible incredible man so that's probably one of the best books I would say uh, the next one, of course, is the uh, is this tunnel through the air here, and uh, this this is a is a really good document. This is a really powerful document, and uh, there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot, really good stuff. So that's a good book. Also. Uh, how to make profits trading in commodities and uh, you can use all these rules 
for any type of asset and uh, stock, doesn't matter. All his rules are uh, are all very worthy. He's uh, he's a good guy. He's he's a really good guy. Anyways, those are the books that I think that, uh, and I have a plethora of other Gan reading books that uh, I bought from W. D. Gan off of Cody's parents, Nikki, back in the day, and uh, and there's a, a lot of like a lot of good books. So. I'm not going to show you them all right now because there's way too many of them. Anyways, um, that's the best books. Okay, so for the last part of our want to learn how to do forecasts, I gave you a little synopsis with Mr. Gann's 45 years in Wall Street, and I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, stuff that you can do. All right, so... Inside of that, I started to make the 2023 stock and Bitcoin forecast. And I'm doing exactly what Mr. Gann has taught me. And uh, going back over the 10, the 20, the 30 year, the 40 year, the 50 year, the 60 year. the 70-year cycle, the 80-year cycle, a great cycle of 90 and 100. These are really big cycles. We have the 110 and the 120-year cycle. And ending it off, I have one more extrapolation. And that is the 130-year cycle at 1893. Where stocks made a low in July. So what are we going to learn from all of this? Well, right now, the uh, in my opinion right now, we're tracking, right now we're tracking more or less this uh, 43 and uh, 1933. So the 80 and 90 right now. So I'm expecting that we're going to have a top in... Uh, one of these two, it doesn't necessarily have to go out that way. I mean, uh, we could certainly have an early top here in March, uh, like the 100-year cycle, and pull down to the October, November, where I'm expecting lows as well. So, and uh, not to forget that uh, we have other cycles that uh, were taking place. You know, we have the jubilee year the 50 year with the oil crisis and uh, that bear market lasted 694 days and uh, we had a top and stocks just went right down just worst bear market so i'm just looking at all these things you know uh, this is what mr gen was in fact uh, talking about and uh, so i do all the research Myself, obviously, using the materials that Mr. Gann was, in fact, uh, putting out. And I really like all his work. It's uh, really precise. And uh, Anyways, I thought maybe I'd share that with you. And uh, as you can see now, we possibly are shadowing a previous time period. And time cycle and it's possible and likely we're gonna have a sideways and downward movement here for the next couple of weeks and then we're gonna start with a very fast move up you know and the fast move can that can happen any old time there probably in the beginning weeks of uh, March here we could have a subsequent uh, breakout from our old top here and uh, get above this 25,000 level. And we've been talking about that. You know, this, if we get above this 25,000 level, you know, we could easily hit this 49,000, right? We can easily come up into this 40 level. Easily. Really easily. There's 46, 47 right here. That makes perfect sense. That would be a, a great resistance level here. 
against our old top. So we're just going to be mindful if this is going to happen. We're not uh, betting the farm or anything, but it's uh, looking like this model is coming together. And as you know, my monthly counts uh, and on my uh, on my stuff here, it uh, I can't remember where I put that text, but uh, it's in here somewhere. One of these. There it is right there. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about here when we uh, when we discuss these. Uh, thank you, Storm Game, for... You know, we've got all these counts, right? These And these counts are all derived from these previous models, right? This yellow model. These counts come from previous bear campaigns coming back from the beginning of Bitcoin. So... We'll be mindful of these, you know, from these tops, we're expecting these bottoms and these breakouts. And uh, so we're going to be watching this. And uh, right now we're uh, on our planetary update. We didn't make our mark on there, but uh, we're going to have to put something on there. Our January 30th, that worked out. This 23rd, well, it was a level. We're not going to say it was a full check mark for a bottom because we didn't get a pullback. So this one was kind of subsequent um, that we're not really sure it was a full bottom. So right now we're 16 for 16, and we almost had 17. It's a bottoming level in this uh, channel, which we were talking about here. So is that going to happen? The way we're saying it's possible doesn't have to also stay tuned we're going to be doing a seminar i was going to update you with that earlier however i've changed the venue and i'm looking around for uh, cheaper and more affordable and better venue i didn't think the casino actually in the end was a, a very good place for us to uh, put our knowledge into place so I'm going to look around and uh, have some updates for you soon. Peace and love to all of you. And uh, tear my tutorials to pieces. Share them. Tear them to pieces. You know, take your time taking in all this stuff. And uh, just rip it to pieces. Peace and love. And uh, I'll see you again soon when we discuss Bitcoin in its totality. Thank you.